Every now and then something opens up in the world. Opportunities appear, but they don't last very long. I'm talking Bitcoin a few years ago, becoming a software engineer a couple decades ago, or even before that, finding oil on your land or in your country, or even gold. I believe there is another opportunity that's open right now, but it's closing more and more with every month that passes. I've taken advantage of it already, alhamdulillah, and I'll explain how I did that, but I really think you should pay attention and take advantage of it yourself as well. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Amin. I wrote that book on Islamic masculinity. I run my online business from here in Istanbul and now I make videos for Muslim men. Now this is the problem. When I speak to Muslim brothers, whether in the UK, US, places like that, they all seem to have the same kind of problems and issues and challenges. They're in a job that they hate. They hate their manager. Their job is soul sucking and just feels like they're crushing their soul by going to it every day. Long commutes, high taxes, low pay, feeling like they have to hide their Muslim identity identity just to go about their daily lives, the liberal agenda being pushed and force fed on them and their family, long commutes to work, can't find a good wife, it goes on and on, all the same problems. And this way of living really crushes your spirits, it dampens your masculine assertiveness and it affects your day-to-day -day real practice of Islam. So how do you get out of this? How do you avoid this fundamental issue that happens to so many of us these days? And how did I escape? Well there is an opportunity to get rid of a lot of these problems problems with just one move. Like the bishop or queen in a chess match that just comes from the corner of the board, you don't expect it and ends the whole game. This has the potential to do that for you and your life. So what is this opportunity? How does it work? And why is it closing? But also why do Muslims have the biggest opportunity to take advantage of this? Believe it or not. This deadly combination is making money in the West, living in a Muslim country and potentially marrying someone from that Muslim country. So let me explain, let me break down how this smashes most of the big problems being faced by the brothers in the West. Money becomes a non-issue because even in Istanbul, the most expensive city in Turkey, which has got more expensive just in the last one, two years, got very expensive, it still costs about a thousand pounds, twelve hundred dollars a month to live here. And if you were to live in a cheaper area or to live in another part of Turkey or to live in a cheaper part of Egypt, it would be much less than a thousand dollars a month. Now, if you have a business, that's like one, two clients clients per month. If they're recurring, then you just can rely on those two clients. Of course, I wouldn't advise that, but one, two clients means you can afford to live here. And if you have a remote job, well then a Western salary will more than cover whatever you need to spend to live in a Muslim country. And this is something to think about really. If you're earning 50K in London, you might really be struggling because you're not keeping much of that money. You've got income, then you've got disposable income. In the UK, you could have a fancy job making 50, 60, 70K, but your expenses are very high. Whereas in a lot of the Muslim world, the difference between what you make and your daily expenses, that is a big factor in how free you can really feel and what you can do with the money that you earn. And then on top of the money side of things, just living in a Muslim country is amazing. One thing I think not enough Muslims in the West realize is that they've developed an inferiority complex just deep down in their subconscious that they don't realize is there, but they feel that they are inferior to non-Muslims. And that comes from growing up as a minority in a country that is not that welcoming to Islamic beliefs, to your beliefs. You end up feeling like you just feel lowly, which is the opposite of what you want. In a Muslim country, everyone's Muslim, everyone's saying salamu alaikum, and you can be open, proud, and just feel free with your religious beliefs. Not to mention you won't have as much, at least, of that liberal agenda being forced down your throat. I mean, Turkey is one of the most liberal countries, you could say, in the Muslim world, and there is not much of that going on. In fact, the average Turk, although they might not be very religious, they are against this liberal agenda that's being pushed in the Western world. So you won't have to worry about that and you won't have to deal with that. And this inferiority complex, it really burdens a lot of the brothers I speak to. Alhamdulillah, I haven't been so much affected by it because I pretty much always lived in the Muslim world. But when I lived quickly in the UK for a few years and then I came back, it really hit me. And then when I spoke to brothers more and more who have moved away from the West to the Muslim world, again, it really hit me how much they were affected and burdened by that feeling. And the mad thing with this whole opportunity is that before you would have had to start an online business to do it. And that's what I used to tell people, like really try to start an online business so you can live in the Muslim world, you can make good money and can live comfortably even if you're not making tons of money. But now a lot of remote jobs are becoming available. A lot of businesses, even if they don't advertise the job as a remote, they might be open to allowing you to work remotely. So I know people who are living in the Muslim world from the West who are English teachers, who are doing call center jobs, who are salespeople, and of course those who 
run a business as well. The best thing, of course, is to run a business, no doubt about that. But you don't have to start with a business anymore. You can find a remote job and move over to the Muslim world and keep a lot of your income, live comfortably in a Muslim world, in a comfortable environment. So now the question is, well, how did I do it specifically? I grew up, most of my life I spent in the UAE, so I was already used to and comfortable with living in the UAE. So I kind of cheated in that sense. I moved back to the UK just for a few years to do some studies and stuff, but I made sure that I moved back to the UAE because I knew deep down that I don't want to get used to living in the UK. I don't want to get comfortable with it. And I wasn't very comfortable with it. I moved back to the UAE. I had some family there, so that helped. I did get a job there. I registered my business. I got married there and I lived there doing that whole Burj Khalifa stuff and everything. I remember this specifically. I traveled from the UAE to Turkey on a Sunday and Monday I had my normal meetings, of course, on Zoom remotely with my team and with my partners. And it was an just another day because my business was online. I could just pick up from one country and move to another. And now I'm here in Turkey two years later and Turkey has some benefits over UAE, but they're both good, to be honest. So this is the amazing opportunity. But what's happening in terms of things closing down is we've had decades and decades of globalization. Everyone opening up their economies, opening up their immigration, come to us, bring your money to us, invest in our country. That's been happening for decades. And finally, that is slowing down. You see a lot of signs of this. For example, in Turkey, they're offering visas less and less to foreigners. Other countries like the US, they're imposing import tariffs on steel from Canada. It's getting harder and harder, for example, to get a visa in Turkey. A lot of people have been moving to Turkey, millions of them, in fact, some of them refugees, and the locals don't all like it. So they're making it harder to get visas here. In Malaysia, it's difficult to get a visa. In Egypt, it's not as stable as before. So slowly, things are getting a bit closed down. Not to mention, it's always beneficial to have another citizenship. And that is also getting harder as well. Countries are imposing stricter rules to get a citizenship. So that's why I advise you get that as soon as possible as well. So many brothers that I speak to in the UK, they're originally from Pakistan or Bangladesh, and they're not getting their Pakistani Bengali citizenship. They should get it as well as the UK one. Get as many as you can, because this is something that you can pass down to your kids. And this is something that as time goes on and countries get more and more closed, it will be harder for you to get it. So get it as soon as possible. Long story short, the world is becoming more and more closed. So you need to take advantage now. Now, I'm not saying there's just a few days or a few weeks left, but every month that passes by, I see things closing more and more. So you want to take advantage of this. And by the way, there's nothing better than urgency to force you to make a difficult decision. And ultimately, I made this video for Muslim men because I know you're the people that are going to make these brave moves. They're going to take their family and they're going to move to a new place, of course, after doing your research. And that's why I wanted to let you know of this opportunity. I've seen nothing like it in terms of accelerating your freedom, your wealth, and your ability to practice and just feel free with your religion. So definitely consider this. I'll be in the comments answering your questions about this topic because I've done it multiple times. And yeah, if you're a Muslim looking to unshackle from your mind or just from the dunya, then this channel is for you. Make sure to subscribe or check out this video over here. Assalamu alaikum.